YouTube is now with Olympus Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about things that can be bad for your balls. Specifically, specifically, combinations when breeding that can either cause major issues with your balls or cause your balls to not be born at all. Like lethal combos. And the reason we're going to cover this today is we have been asked a lot about this. I've had a lot of comments saying, hey, can you do a video about some of the known breeding problems as we've done videos on genetics and all of that. It kind of comes full circle, some of the things you shouldn't do. This is by no means a comprehensive list. Let me point that out from the beginning, okay? This is not the entire list of problems. When you're going to breed ball pythons, some of that is on you to go find, right? It's on you to do some research on that. When you're going to make mistakes, we all are, and you may find things that don't work together that you don't continue to do as new stuff comes out. That's part of what happens. But let's talk about some of the things we do know. First, I want to cover champagne. And Kurt, come on around here if you want. We'll show off our champagne girl. Don't mind that she's still a little thin. Remember, she just laid eggs, but she is eating good, putting weight back on. But that, obviously, is champagne. And champagne has a couple combinations you can't put it to. One, do not make a super champagne. Do not breed champagne to champagne. If you do, you're going to have dead babies. There's an entire Irish folk song about that, about dead puppies aren't any fun. Neither are dead snakes, so no champagne to champagne. Also, with that being said, keep your champagnes away from your spiders. No champagne to spider. Here's what we do here at Olympus to avoid ever putting the champagne to champagne on accident. Because what if I'm gone and Kurt's gone, we're on a trip, and I have to have a question girl come in here and do the pairings, and she gets something confused. Well, that sucks, okay, if somebody confuses something, or somebody else who's working for me confuses something. You know, I have to, like, see who the daddy is in. But it's a whole other thing if it's a lethal combo, because I know champagne to champagne's bad. So I want to make sure that that never happens, right? So on champagne, one thing we've done is we only keep females. I do not own a male champagne. Do not own one, because there's no point in ever taking a male champagne and breeding to a female champagne. I don't want to make dead babies. Let's cover another one while we're at it. We said don't put champagne to champagne. Also, don't put it to spider, okay? Look at that gravid girl. Spider to champagne is another lethal combo. You're going to have dead babies. They do not do well. A few have hatched alive. They die basically right after. Another combo that's hotly debated, <laughs> debated, that's hotly debated involving spiders is spider to spider pairings. And it's something that in the past I've kind of said, hey, you do you. You do what you want because... I'm not going to say it's this or it's that, uh, that I don't do it. Well, we're going to take that a step further as some more things have come out. Somebody recently actually made several pairings and tracked it. So they followed the information to check the values and see what happened. Actually did hatch a super spider who actually was alive in the egg when it was cut. It was in there moving around. You can see it. it didn't look real healthy, but it was alive. And then, of course, it died right after. So I am ready to say that spider to spider is lethal. So do not do spider to spider. Just don't do it. Okay, I do have spider males and spider females, so that is something we will have to be careful of around here. But never mix the two. We've personally never done that breeding. I know others have. I heard people say it's lethal. I heard people say I do it all the time, it's fine. These people here say, well, I get more dead eggs. These people over here say, well, I don't. These folks over here would say, what's your numbers? They'd say, well, we never really track numbers. And so it was this back and forth. I mean, was it just slugs or was it lethal? Was it a problem? But after seeing some of that research coming out where he actually tracked, he's showing that about 25% of the eggs are either infertile or go infertile right after being laid. You know, they'll look like a normal egg with no vein work um, or going fertile right before being laid. And then he actually hatched what I heard of as being the second super spider. And the first one that was debated, is it a super spider or is it just an underdeveloped snake? Well, this one was full term, had a little bit of color on its head, and the rest of the body was white, and it looked like shit from day one, and it died on day one. So I'm ready to say that that was, in fact, very, very likely a super spider, and that that is a lethal combo. So spider to spider's out, champagne to champagne's out, spider to champagne is out. And everybody tracking with me. That brings us to a few other things. You have to wait on your questions back there till the very end. And that is Desert. Desert oh, was a gene that, man, when it came out, everybody was excited for it. Like, holy shit, look at this. This is great. And everybody was all up on Desert. They were going for big money, lots of plants, one of the best cleaner genes out there. And a lot of you probably never even heard of that shit. And here is why. It was found that Desert females can't lay eggs. You breed Deserts, the females go egg-bound. Okay, it doesn't matter who the father is. 
you breed a desert female, she's going to go egg bound, and she's most likely going to die. Right? She's not going to have healthy babies. So while making deserts isn't lethal, the female is lethal to every baby she has. So deserts, nobody really breeds those because who wants to make a female that she can't, that's worthless. That is not to be confused with desert ghost. Remember, desert is one whole gene. Desert ghost is an entirely different gene, okay? So desert's the one that creates dead babies. Desert ghost does not. And I did write down a few just so I wouldn't leave out anything I wanted to talk about. And that also brings us, like, I read my crappy-ass handwriting. Oh, caramel albino. And the issue with caramel albino isn't so much that they're going to be dead babies, but they kink. They kink badly. So if you hatch caramel albinos, you tend to have more kinked babies. A lot of people do make them. And that's going to be a decision for you as a breeder. Do you want to try to make caramel albinos? See what your rate of success is. Is it maybe you strengthen the genetics by bringing in outside bloodlines and working? Maybe. But as of right now, most people who breed caramels will tell you they're going to get higher kink rates. And there's some things out there that are very similar to caramel that are kind of pushing caramel to the back. And they're coming to the forefront. So you're, you're going to see less caramel, I think, as time goes on, which is sad. And then we get to the eight ball complex stuff, which would be your super black pastel, your super cinnamon, and your super or your cinnamon black pastel allelic combos. Right? Remember that allelic video? Right? If you get a black pastel and you get a cinnamon, it's allelic. Acts like a super, but they still have the same problems as a super black pastel or super cinnamon. And that tends to be deformed faces and also kinking. That is a clutch that we're going to try to see if it's as bad as advertised. Uh, we're doing it. Not this year. We'll be next season. And if it goes bad for us, I'm only going to do it once. If we're able to do it, we may attempt to do it again. It's a snake I really want to hatch. But if I, if I have six eggs and three of them come out as genetic monsters, I can tell you now I'm going to feel like shit for about two weeks and never do it again. So that's that. But I kind of feel like it is something that we're going to try. Is that the right decision? I don't know. I don't. We're going to go for it? Yeah, I want to try to work with one of those hard genes and see it, if we can do something different. Uh, we probably can't, but we're going to give the, the old college a try. And that kind of covers the ball python morphs that I wanted to talk about that are lethal or have major issues. That being said, there are more. So don't just say, well, you know, Matt never listed these are good to go. If you're going to do a pairing and you're not sure, do a little research on it. You know, and you might find there's some problems with it. 95% of all pairings out there are great. But there are a few that just don't play nice, right? And that is, got one of the carpet pythons too, which is behind me. And you can see our pretty carpet python, Kronos. You've all met him multiple times. He's a jungle jag. When you take carpet pythons and you breed jaguar to jaguar... Any two jags, I don't care if it's a jungle jag, coastal jag, which was where jag started, or anything like that. You bring two jags together, you're going to get dead babies. 25% dead babies. They call it white death. It's going to happen. Don't do it. Don't bring jag to jag. Oh, cystic carpet python would be badass. Unfortunately, it's not stable. It is the way it is, and that's okay. You know, I have heard of those living, I think the longest I've heard of one living was maybe like 10 days before it crapped out and died. And for me, the worst thing I could do is bring an animal into the world, have it live for a little while in agony as I'm trying to fix it and have it die anyway. Now, I'm not blaming the breeder for that. He didn't know. It was, that was how he found out it didn't work, right? But I don't want to be doing that if I know they all come out dead. Why would I try to breed leucistic carpet pythons if I know every one of them is going to die? Well, I'm not. And neither does anybody else because of that. So, uh, you don't see jag-to-jag -jag pairings very often. <sighs> that was a lot. All right. Kurt, any questions? What about breeding different snake, um, uh, diff different snake together, like, say, a carpet and a ball python? Uh, you can do that. I don't know if I've ever heard of anybody crossing a carpet and a ball. Yeah, actually, I have. I call them carpals, I believe. Uh, they're not something I would do. <laughs> you also have seen, I think, blood balls. You've seen, believe it or not, Burmese balls happens. You also, probably the most common I think you see is 
more closely related species of like different carpet pythons with their old Morelia uh, breeding together. And then you do see, you know, like green tree pythons also in the Morelia family breeding the carpet pythons. You can't do that, but it can cause some infertility issues, especially when you get way sideways. There's angry balls too, and golem and ball python crosses, but they're pretty closely related and angry balls can reproduce. So it can be done. Uh, it's also been done in Aatrox. I've heard of Aatrox horridus crosses. That's uh, Western Diamondback timber crosses. I've heard of that being done. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> you know, so it can be done. Uh, in my experience, it tends to be kind of frowned on, except for in like carpet pythons, because that's part coastal. Has to be to get the jag in there. So you do see some of that because of all the Morelia being so closely related. And you have your Morelia purists who want jungles to stay jungles. Uh, you know, Erinjayas to stay Erinjayas, and they'll track the bloodlines. Well, this is 96.4% jungle, and I haven't gotten all that. But uh, it's not something I see a lot of. Uh, it's not something I think there's a huge market for. So, but can you do it? Yes. And, and I'll say this, as long as you're producing animals that do well and are healthy, I don't personally see an issue with it if it's what you want to do. You know, no... You can get into all the health problems with some mammals like ligers when you do that, but that's a whole other discussion. And you have to ask yourself then if it's the right thing to do or not. And if it ends up not being, then you should probably stop and do something else. Kind of like our super black pastels we're going to do. We're going to try it. If it ends up not being the right thing morally for us after we try it, we'll stop. I'm not going to keep banging my head against the same damn wall, right? So that's kind of where I'd go with that. Any other questions from camera guy Kurt? No. All right, what about Question Girl? Who's actually with us today? Any questions from Question Girl? Yeah, you were referring when you were talking about person A over here and person B over here, and they were having an argument earlier in the video when you were referring person to them. Person A, person B. Argument. Person over here, person over here, and you used your hands to okay. talk. You said he had done the research, I don't but you. remember what all I say sometimes. You go ahead, go ahead. didn't say who he was. Are he was hypothetical. He was hypothetical. So there is no research on it? On there there is, but he doesn't know the specific name of the people. Oh, on the spider to spider research? I could get it. It was actually recently in a Facebook post. I don't want to mess up the name. It was Matt something. I want to say maybe Hulk or Hulker or something like that. Don't quote me if I got it wrong. He was the gentleman I was referencing who did the research and put it out there. And I thought, you know, in reading what he'd done, he made it pretty clear. Um, and so... You know, and if somebody makes a valid argument, you know, I was on the fence on Spider. Spider to Spider. I love Spider. No, even with this news, I still love Spider. I am still firmly on the Spider train. But if somebody does good research and puts information out there it, that's you can look at and say, yeah, damn, that's right, you know, you, you kind of be foolish not to take it. And so he did that, and I, looking at it, I, I think he's right. But yes, that would be who I, I want to say it's Hulk, Matt Hulk, but don't quote me. It's another map. And if it's from another map, then he's got to be right. Because, I mean, if you look all through history, you're never going to find many maps that are wrong. Adolfs are always wrong. But maps, they, they're pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> all right, any more questions from the back? Yeah, you said that there was a leucistic carpet. What's that mean? Leucistic is like an all-white. And it's not stable. It's dead. They're all dead. They all die. Every leucistic carpet made from a jag-to-jag pairing will die shouldn't be shouldn't be paired that and you're if you morally know you're going to make babies here and hatch suffer and die uh, i'm not for it so that's why i'm not for champagne to champagne i'm not for spider to spider you know my hope on the black pastel is let's say i do get one that's kind of got a kink in it or something like that it shouldn't be used for breeding as long as they can eat poop and shed you know i'll let it be somebody's pet as long as they don't breed it we have a problem i mean it can still have a good life uh it's like people you know, i know some people that have something wrong with them some people say i have something wrong with me up here but uh doesn't mean i don't have a good life right or that it wouldn't deserve a good life too as long as they can function and function well the reason i wouldn't breed a female with a kink spine would be the uh, ability to pass eggs be compromised possibly causing issues with breeding and issues with the eggs and issues with the female and i wouldn't do something to an animal that i thought would kill it so uh you know or have a higher likelihood of killing it then it's, yeah, so I just wouldn't do that. But any other questions? Do you know what red would produce? Well, red would produce Western Diamondbacks. 
As far as what kind, I don't know. We're hoping to prove that out. Red's an unknown. I mean, as far as we know, she is the only female in captivity in the world in that color. There are two males in captivity that are red, not as red as her, but red that are Western Diamondbacks. It came from the same general area she did. They are both in my care as well. And uh, we'll see if we can reproduce that down the road. But I don't know. And somebody always says, that's a crowdless ruber. It's not a crowdless ruber. It's not a crowdless ruber. Unless they migrated their happy ass clear into Oklahoma. Guaranteed ain't a ruber. All right, one more question if you got it. Nope, she says they're good. That's good because I'm tired of answering them. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.